The last few weeks have really been a facepalm moment for the entire cybersecurity industry. Of course, I do not possess the skills nor patience to go into every incident that occurred, but in this video we'll be talking about a few of the most devastating DDoS attacks that we've seen. And we have seen quite a few of them. These things have been popping up at an unparalleled rate, and we've seen several record-breaking incidents. Before I get into some of the incidents, I'm going to cover the basics of DDoS, since um, some of you may not be familiar with it. So DOS basically stands for a denial of service attack. What it means is an attacker can flood a web server with a ton of requests until it gets overwhelmed. And once that happens, the server will no longer be able to respond to legitimate requests from users trying to access the site. So as a result, a lot of people are not going to be able to visit the website and they are going to be denied service, aka the site goes down. Now the other D in DDoS stands for distributed. You see, well, if you just technically attack a website with one IP or one computer, the host may just figure out that you're an attacker and they might just block that particular user from the website, preventing further attack. But when the attack occurs from a variety of IP addresses, from different locations, it's very difficult for the website provider to figure out which requests are legitimate and which requests are threats. So that is where things get quite a bit problematic. So how is this possible? You might be wondering, how come someone would be able to use thousands of computers to perform this kind of an attack? It's not like the attackers are really rich people and they have their entire data centers located all around the world where they just you know, run those computers for the purpose of attacking other users. No, that's not how it works. Cyber criminals basically just control a botnet. So botnet, you might be familiar with the term, it's basically just another kind of malware. It's a malware program that's going to give these hackers the ability to control some aspect of other computers. You might have heard the parallel zombie network a lot of times. So once they have control of a very large botnet, they can now use all the computers under it to perform DDoS attacks. So what does all of this have to do with IoT? Well, as you might be knowing, Internet of Things is incredibly vulnerable which means it's not particularly difficult for hackers to inject a botnet code into the insecure operating systems on IoT devices. And while a user may have only one computer at home, they might have several security cameras, they might have um, several home appliances, and each of those devices now has an individual IP. As a result, the net distribution gets much more complicated. As we move into the future and we look at more IoT devices, it is going to be of paramount importance to secure them, because otherwise we are going to see DDoS attacks that will just take down most of the internet. And uh, we have seen a few of those already. So the first attack that I'm going to be covering is the one on Dyn DNS. So you see, the hackers, they've become quite smart. They realized, well, instead of targeting individual web servers and taking them down, if we target something like a DNS server, that is going to take down a lot of websites. Because a DNS server is basically the address book of the internet. When you go to something like, say, the PCSecurityChannel.com, what's happening is the individual IP address on which the website is hosted gets mapped to this keyword that you just typed in, and that is done by DNS servers. They keep a record of these things. Now, if the DNS server, which is responsible for creating that map, is taken down, you're not going to be able to access the PeaceSecurityChannel.com or any website that the DNS service is responsible for dealing with. So as a result, this attack was able to take down pretty much the entire east coast of the United States internet. And uh, that is insanely scary. So we're not talking about one particular website or service going down. It's not Microsoft going down. It's not Xbox Live going down on Christmas. Now we're talking about variety of websites being affected. And for those of you that missed the pun, well, the name sounds quite ominous if you ask me. Dying DNS. Anybody got that? Never mind. We'll move on. 
So another attack was on OVH, which is a hosting company. And there are several claims. Um, I'm not sure how factual they are because I don't really have a database of every single DDoS attack that ever was, but a lot of websites are claiming that this was the largest DDoS attack ever, with the peak attack rate being very close to one terabytes per second. I mean, just think about it in terms of internet speed. So that was pretty crazy stuff. And um, that's not it. We had another record DDoS incident, and all of this occurred within the last couple of weeks or so. Krebs on Security, a very popular security blog, some of you may be aware of it, was hit with a record DDoS as well. The peak attack rate being something like 363 gigabits per second. I guess the peak attack rate was somewhere between 300 to 600 gigabits per second. I'm not exactly sure, but they did manage to take the website offline for a long time, despite it being hosted by Akamai and with all sorts of uh, DDoS protection measures in place. And now coming to the most recent incident in which the Mirai botnet, which was again responsible for a lot of these large scale DDoS attacks, was kind of able to take down the internet of an entire country, Liberia. So this should give you a hint of the devastation that can be unleashed with the help of IoT devices. And the Mirai botnet in particular was able to control thousands of security cameras. You see what happens is uh, there are several organizations that don't even know that they're using IoT devices. Let's say they just purchase security cameras and they just connect to it via console over the internet. They don't even realize that it has something to do with IoT or what is a DDoS attack. They may not even be aware of the fact, but they're just going to use the application. And it's quite ironic because you're basically using security cameras to destroy the security of the internet. This is no joke. They were able to take down the internet of an entire country for a considerable amount of time. And if we look at the traffic reports for Liberia, you can clearly notice the drop in traffic after the certain period when the DDoS attack began. This just goes to show how insecure and dangerous having IoT devices out of hand can be. And as their number keeps growing, the potential for such attacks is only going to get worse. So now instead of um, having to take over individual PCs, they can attack IoT devices. And when was the last time you installed an antivirus on your security camera? When was the last time you installed intrusion detection software in your thermostat? People just don't do it. Now luckily, there are a few products coming out, and um, Sophos, I believe, have a home protection where you can basically use their hardware firewall to block threats over an entire network. Bitdefender has something called the Bitdefender box, which is supposed to take care of all devices on your connection. But then again, I mean, these aren't exactly device level security measures, and there's still ways in which, you know, hackers could potentially sneak into those devices. So what we need is a more secure implementation of the OS for IoT devices. Maybe there should be a new OS for those devices because the operating systems we are currently using are usually just variants of Android. And Android can be quite vulnerable. If you, you know, look at Android malware, it's not really difficult to see why. So I thought I should make a dedicated video about these things just to spread a little bit of awareness. If you are using IoT devices, you should definitely consider the security repercussions because you never know. You can have FBI knocking down your door because your device was involved in a large-scale DDoS attack and you might not even be aware of that fact. And especially if you're using IoT devices for door locks or for any kind of security application, you should be very concerned. I mean, someone could potentially hack your security camera and be looking at everything you're doing. So. Yeah, that's, that's scary. Just to be clear, I'm not fear-mongering or trying to suggest that we shouldn't really move into the future or we shouldn't accept IoT devices. This is just an awareness raiser so that people start taking these things seriously because you don't want to wake up one day having half of the internet down. And that does not seem like an impossible thing, especially after the Mirai botnet and the record-breaking DDoS attacks that we've been seeing in the last couple of weeks. What else happened recently? 
somebody called Donald Trump got elected as the president of the United States. Congratulations, Donald Trump. Do I see a mushroom cloud? Um, no, okay, we're good for now. But um, yeah, that's basically what happened. So, well, if you live in the United States, good luck, I guess. Honestly, I really don't know. Um, I really wouldn't comment on the entire election. I'm just not going to get drawn into that debate. But I will say this. The election was probably more about choosing the lesser of two evils rather than choosing somebody because of their merits. At least that's how I felt about it. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Give me some feedback on this video. So let me know if it was interesting or if you just thought it's just boring and it just my rambling makes no sense. So feel free to you know post your thoughts in the comments below. And uh, well, this is Leo and you are watching PC Security Channel. As always, stay informed, stay secure.